Thank you very much, Ferdosi. Uh, so, um, so, in the interest of time, I'll go just directly in the uh, in the topic. Yep. Okay. So, very quickly, uh, you know, it's uh, we will uh, we'll try to uh, to focus a little bit on the progress on the um, done in the roadmap of the past twelve months but also to put that in a global perspective uh, and uh, also to uh, look uh, ahead. So I'm not going to read all the points, but you know, so this is the plan of the presentation. So I'm sure you all know, you all remember that uh, this, but sometimes it's good to, uh, to put it back again. So this is the objective that we are trying to attain by 2030, 90% reduction of death. 20 countries that have uh, eliminated cholera by 2030, so documented elimination, no more uncontrolled uh, outbreaks uh, and uh, accelerated sustainable goals. We'll see that there are still some challenges ahead. So <coughs> to complete uh, what uh, Henry has done uh, previously, I just wanted to have a, a look at a different scale uh, in, uh, in terms of perspective. So. The context has been well described and uh, cl very clearly the climate change uh, and the, the impact of the climate change has uh, influenced a number of uh, uh, large outbreak. Uh, but what we are seeing for the past two and a half year, um, two, two years is uh, an increasing number of outbreak and larger outbreak and more deadly. So if you look on the right, on the top map, uh, so in, in pale blue, it's a country which, let's say, are uh, endemic or endemo-epidemic. The running green are the ones where no cases have been officially reported. That does not mean that there is no case. I really repeat, it's officially reported. Uh, and uh, in, uh, in red, uh, they have the, the country where uh, cholera has been um, reported after at least three years without a documented transmission. And the dark one, the dark red, are the countries that have been re-affected since uh, the launch of the roadmap. And you have four countries, eh? Lebanon, Syria, uh, Eswatini, and uh, South Africa, uh, and possibly some more. If you go on the bottom uh, map, so it's the same map, but uh, trying to look at um, you know, the dynamic of the outbreak compared to previous, uh, to previous years. And then you see that there is a very different dynamic with very large outbreak in East Africa, Austral Africa, uh, part of DRC. And again, it's, uh, it's not doing a favor to DRC because it's not the whole country, but it's part of DRC, especially Kivu. Of course, uh, Haiti and to a lesser extent Dominican Republic, but you can see very quickly also the big change, which is a big red dot in Central Asia, uh, and uh, uh, which which used to be uh, quiet for a while. So, just taking the case fatality rate or the death actually as an uh, as a as an example of the complexity of the situation, but also because it's one uh, of the uh, the the, um, <coughs> the objective of the roadmap. So. Apart from the two last years, these are the data that are reported by country to WHO on a voluntary basis. So again, there are a lot of countries that do not report data, and I'm using this opportunity to call for countries to share information. There are some mechanisms under IHR where they can report also confidentiality. There is no sanction that can be applied to countries they don't report. So if we don't know, we cannot do anything with that. So it's really an opportunity also to say the time where cholera should be kept, uh, you know, as a secret, it's gone. We need your data to understand where to move. So we know that the data reported in WER, uh, weekly epidemiological record, is not representative of the situation, okay? And I can say that as WHO, you have no problem with that. <laughs> so they are not representative because the surveillance system are different, because some countries are not reporting data, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, okay? So, but this is the only source of official information we have. <clears throat> and since 2010, I mean, at least in the roadmap, there have not been major change in reporting mechanism, okay? So the same number of countries. Of course, you can see, looking at the data, there have been big changes in number of reported deaths. Well, actually, if you look individually with big events, so taking out IT, that was a major outbreak, 
uh, but also Yemen, where we know that most of the cases that were reported were not actually cholera cases. But, you know, with one million cases, even if you have a proportion of cases, that's a lot of deaths that are being reported under cholera. Some of them were cholera deaths, of course. Uh, <clears throat> so, of course, there are some fluctuations. But the things where we could concentrate is a blue line, which is basically the other country, excluding Nigeria and Yemen and Haiti. Okay, so it's, yes, there's been a reduction of the number of deaths reported officially since 2017, since the introduction of the roadmap. And since 2021, there is a very sharp increase in the number of crude number of deaths reported. So some people still challenge the fact that the mortality rate can be challenging. I mean, you know, this is the information we have. And this excluding IT, where there is a good reporting of both case and death, but also looking at Nigeria. 2021, there were four, almost a 400 increase in number of deaths is reported. You know, so it has never, I mean, such an increase in number of deaths has ne never been reported, yeah, at least in the 20 past years. So this is uh, the situation. This is not to say that countries are doing less. This is a reality. Of this, when we said there are larger outbreak, more of them, more deadly. This is a reality, and this is fueled by conflict, by uh, war, by uh, population displacement, and uh, climate change, and other factors. So, OCV. Okay, so I know that there was a lot of going to be some question about OCV. So I anticipated the question. So for this year, just to be clear, we will have around plus minus 37 million doses of vaccine. That's the total expected production for the world. That's a reality. So this is already an increase from, from last year, at least from <coughs> one manufacturer there. A lot of efforts that are made by manufacturers, by partners such as Gavi, Gates, uh, IVI, WHO, UNICEF, etc., to make this change. There are some new manufacturers that will come into the market, possibly in some time, but this will take time. So for this year, this is what we are going to have. End of the story. So you can ask for more. There will not be more. So that's the reality that we are dealing, uh, you know, with ICG, you know, being uh, playing, replaying the movie Sophie's Choice every week, you know, where you get it, you don't get it. That's a reality. So on average, there is a maximum of 3 million new doses produced per month. Okay, that's a maximum. <coughs> 15 million have already been shipped. Okay, so... It's very difficult. So, so far, since the beginning of the year up to, uh, to mid-June, we have, ICG has received over 14, 40 million doses requests. Okay? So, um, <clears throat> at least five of these requests were partially approved just on the basis of the number of doses. We know that some of the requests, when they come, they are already pre-reduced because the country knows that they will not get the number of doses. So don't get, uh, you know, on the figure, on the exact, you know, I mean, it's, uh, you know, a finger in the wind. Uh, but the estimation is just on the basis of the received request, if they would have been uh, assessed, we would have a gap considering the, the one dose strategy of 50 million doses just for the beginning of the year. Last year was 40 million. That's a reality. So, and this will not change. Uh, <coughs> you know, the, the increase in vaccine is expected in 24, 25. Okay, so in the best case scenario, it can double. Double, okay. So, uh, you know, it will be uh, uh, 80 million. Okay, so this is a reality. OCV was a game changer. It's remaining a game changer, but we don't have enough vaccine because there is too many requests, too many large outbreaks. Okay. So, of course, that has also implication, very clear implication, on the capacity to do preventive vaccination campaign. I know where you're coming from, Yeshambel. Of course, we have already 17 million doses that were previously approved for preventive campaign that could not be implemented because there was no vaccine. And Ethiopia is part of them. So, <clears throat> for that, you know, I mean, the, the outbreak needs to be brought to control before... Uh, preventive vaccination campaign uh, can be implemented. But of course, it's also, you know, feeding, it's a, de de it's a, um, a dead cy circle, you know, more outbreak, less preventive, so you have more outbreak, etc., etc. So we are totally aware, but the thing is, okay, there is an outbreak, you need to respond to the outbreak because people are dying. 
So um, one of the reasons as well, I mean, you know, which is more difficult to measure, and this is what and we are talking about, accessibility in medical and non-medical commodities. Kits, I mean, just these are preliminary data, but, you know, this is just what has been sent from HQ emergency stockpile that doesn't even count what has been provided by the region or by, by the country or whatever. And that's include IV fluid, uh, ORS, uh, antibiotic, lab di diagnosis, etc., etc. Okay? So, but you can see in 2023, uh, mid-June, a third, no, 23% of the stock was sent in bulk, which is much more complicated in the country to manage. You know, they have, so, so this is a reality. So I know that some countries say, you have to send us more, but you are not alone. This is the reality the world is facing. So it's not just about vaccine. It's about treatment, beds, you know, I mean, things as simple as that. And unfortunately, I will stop here with, you know, because we don't have enough data about, you know, the impact on surveillance, what has been done in terms of wash, et cetera, et cetera. So these are just two examples. But the situation is bad, and it's not due to just a lack of investment. So now it's moving to the positive part. <laughs> so <clears throat> this is uh, uh, the progress of the country uh, in terms of uh, developing their uh, NCP. So of course, uh, uh, the, the, um, the choice was just to report on the basis of the information that we have received. Okay, so. There are many countries that might be a little bit more advanced. If you don't share your information with the GTFCC, don't expect that the GTFCC is going to guess it. Okay, so either we have the information, either we don't. So since last year, so we have already eight countries that have uh, finalized their national cholera plan, uh, two uh, that have uh, submitted to IRP uh, or that will soon <laughs> uh, submit um, uh, Benin and, and, uh, and Togo. And there are three for which we know that there is some progress. Uh, so Cameroon, Mozambique, and Tanzania. Okay, for the other one, we have no update. So they were reported last year as under progress, but we don't know where they are. So what does that mean? It's, you know, 50 countries almost uh, have no uh, post uh, uh, roadmap NCP. The hotspot, which is a subset. Uh, of course, this is the first phase of the NCP. The situation is much better. Okay, so um, so the the uh, there have been market progress. Uh, I mean, 14 countries have completed their MAPI, which is the uh, PAMI, sorry, uh, Priority Multi uh, Area for Multi Sectorial Intervention, which is the, for the old name, for the new name for hotspot. So Bangladesh, Benin, Burkina Faso, Cameroon, Chad, uh, Cong uh, DRC. Ghana, Kenya, Mali, Mozambique, Niger, Nigeria, Sierra Leone, and Togo have finalized their hotspots since last year. So this is a massive improvement. Uh, again, huh, there is uh, still a lot of to do, and you can see again Asia, Middle East up to the, uh, to the end. Uh, there is no uh, progress uh, apart from Bangladesh in this area, taking into consideration that now you have new countries that you have to reconsider. So... This is just a very quick and dirty way to assess also combining the progress of the map, but also a changing environment where, uh, you know, if you look at the country that have not reported cases for a while, but hoping that, you know, no cases reported means really no cases, that's still to be documented. But let's say the eastern, the western part of Africa, apart from Nigeria, Togo, Benin, is relatively quiet. Because this is not a place where we need to put all our attention. The eastern part of Africa, from the top to the bottom, uh, the, the, is really the part where we need to focus in Africa. But also, very importantly, Middle East and Asia. This is where the progress, the massive progress needs to be, ma to be made. I'm not forgetting the Caribbeans, but uh, don't forget that Haiti and Dominican Republic were <laughs> last year on the way of thinking of submitting their dossier to for uh, cholera-free status. So uh, the process will restart. <laughs> So, again, not going into detail, but uh, you can see the difference by, uh, by, uh, by region, but very clearly we have some uh, reprioritization uh, need to be done. So, 
uh, there, there are uh, a lot of work that has been done by the technical groups that I'm not going to present because there will be specific sessions just after. Um, there is an important work which is done with partner and along with partner on the Coleratas team to try to develop uh, uh, an advocacy a strategy uh, for uh, maintaining and bringing upward uh, the cholera and the public health agenda. Uh, of course, all these kind of things are done under the country leadership. I mean, the thing is we are working for the country and not instead of the country. So at the end of the day, you are the one who are holding the things. Uh, and of course, uh, you know, the acknowledgement of the partner uh, job is, of course, very important. So, uh, so this is, uh, this is uh, you will have it, of course, uh, it will be shared. Uh, but, you know, the, uh, the number of partners, which uh, uh, it's also increasing, and this is based on the, the re- uh, Recommitment process. Um, okay, so just again to try to see what have been done since uh, now we are in 2023, so we are midway eh, between uh, 17 and 2013. So uh, in May 2017, uh, the uh, WHA, uh, uh, so, so that was the first event around the, um, the, uh, the, the launch of the, uh, of the roadmap. In October, uh, the uh, roadmap was launched. Uh, okay, so, uh, okay. Uh, in 2018, uh, there was again uh, the resolution uh, at the WHO uh, World Health Assembly about cholera. Uh, elimination from the roadmap. Huh? Uh, so you will keep, you will have access to that. Uh, 2019, the investment uh, analysis was completed. Uh, again, there was an, uh, another side event, uh, side from the WHO hosted by Gavi. Uh, okay. Uh, 2020, despite COVID, uh, a side event virtual, which was very important. There was the launch of the CSP. Uh, and an op-ed done by through the, the chair of the GTFCC. Uh, 2021, um, the, the roadmap uh, research agenda was launched. Uh, to, uh, the, there was a very high level side event, very well attended by uh, at least seven or eight ministers, the DG himself, uh, and that was also by IFSC. Uh, no, that was 2022. Sorry, so here we are. Um, first meeting of the, the advocacy task team, and we are uh, this year already uh, the WHA, uh, the UN Water Week. And it was mentioned today that it was the first year in decade that country were meeting to talk about water and sanitation. So it was very important to, uh, to be there and to try to, uh, to put a little bit the flag of cholera. Uh, and I think that was useful. And uh, uh, and again, um, uh, so there was some communication and WHA, uh, including Korea. Okay. So too much. Okay. So what next? What we need now to do is to uh, look what has been done, but what still needs to be done. So what we need to be able to do, uh, looking at all, so you have on the background the, uh, the, uh, the target uh, of the roadmap. So they are all uh, written in the roadmap. Where are we? On track, uh, too soon to say, uh, off track, and this for all of the specific objectives. For that, we will need to have uh, much more information. So we have the roadmap. Uh, we have an operational uh, plan, uh, but we need also some more information to feed into the system. Okay, so uh, it's good to have work plan, but if there is no uh, a global perspective of what's going on. Uh, and then there is the annual uh, work plan that are developed by each of the working group. But the, the, the part which is inhibiting, it's in fact the part which is kind of lacking for us to be able to inform uh, both uh, the annual work plan, but also where are we uh, in terms of roadmaps implementation. So don't try to read this. This is just an example. Uh, so, uh, uh, so this is just the kind of things that we need to populate. Okay. So for each of the, the objectives, the outcomes, the activities, uh, and these by sub pillars. Okay. So uh, I'm finished.
<laughs> but uh, for today, but uh, there is still a lot of to do in terms of roadmap implementation. Hmm?